All right, hello people watching this video. This is 12-2. I'm gonna do the first half of this today and the second half of it tomorrow. And then what's gonna happen the rest of next week, Monday and Tuesday of next week, we're gonna do 12-3, that's the last section. And then we start on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we do the packet, which is your review for the test. That packet you can use on the test. If you are going to be gone for track and or golf, or golf, because you can't be in both, uh, next week, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, it is on you to get your packet filled out. If you come the day of test day and do not have your packet filled in, that is on you. I'm not going to let you fill it out before you take the test. Yes. I will record all of those. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And tomorrow. Yes, correct. Okay. I'll record everything and send it to you, but it is on you to fill it out. So if you don't watch the video, I'm not going to let you fill it out. Okay. All right, 12-2 matrices. I already said that the first part of this is easy. The second part of it you need to pay attention to. So these are called augmented matrices. We just got done solving these systems by doing substitution and elimination. And now we are incorporating matrices, which look like this, okay? You guys have probably seen these on the ACT because they ask you questions. Put your hand down. They ask you questions about matrices on the ACT. Here is how you make an augmented matrix, okay? First of all, you need to make sure that your X's are in the same spot, your Y's are in the same spot, then you have your equal sign, and then you have your numbers over here, right? We will eventually get to like three by three matrices, but make sure that your X's are on top of each other, Y's are on top of each other, numbers are on top of each other. Here is an augmented matrix, right? You open and you open, right? This is going to have two rows, because it has two rows, and it's going to have three columns, one, two, three. And it is augmented because you put like a little dotted line where your equal sign lives, okay? What does augmented mean? Uh, uh, to augment, to separate. Augment means like cut off, separate, okay? That's how that works, okay? Did you make that up? All right, so there's your dotted line. No, it's called an augmented matrix, okay? And then we just put the coefficients in our matrix. So it's a two by three matrix. So one, two, wait, negative wait, two. Wait, wait. One, two, wow. negative two. We are we're getting rid of the 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 variables. We're getting rid of the x's and y's to make it simpler. Okay. All right, and then we do two, six, and two on the bottom. Okay. Any negatives need to make sure and go with that coefficient. Go with that number. That's the augmented matrix. Okay. Put your dotted line where the equal sign goes. That's it. That's how you make it into an augmented matrix. Now, we don't are adding or anything. The hard part is coming down below at the bottom of this first page where we actually solve it. That's going to be the hard part, okay? So, now they want us to do the other way around. Well, I guess this is the answer. I went over that, okay? Now, let's take this one and let's make an augmented matrix of this one. So, this one is going to have how many rows? Three. Three rows and Four columns. Oh, Rows right. go this way. <laughs> Rows go this way. You columns. One, two. Oh, that's what we're going to go over. Yes, you do. You put zero. So I still only augment or only put that dotted line on that last column, okay, where my equal sign is. So the top row going across, first of all, make sure your X's, Y's, Z's are all in the right spots with each other. Yeah. Okay. So X's are on top of X's, Y's on top of Y's, Z's on top of Z's, and the numbers on the other side. You might have to move some things sometimes, okay? Top row, one, two, three, negative two, yes? Yep. Good, okay. The second row, Emma zero. just asked, what do you put if there's nothing there? You do put zero. zero. But you don't two, put negative five, and six. <laughs> what, you don't put it where? No. Uh, yes, correct. You, you need to put it where it's supposed to go. Okay, the last one, three, three, ten, negative two, yeah? And that is it. Okay, good, good. All right, now, uh, on your homework assignment, uh, we don't have an example like this, but on your homework assignment, if I give you this, can you give me this? Yes, right? Okay, now... I don't tell you what variables to use, but if I give you this, the first one is X, Y, Z, right? Okay. Okay. Like ABC. Ours, the first? You can use ABC because I technically don't care what variable you use. Just make sure that they're different variables. Make sense? Oh, okay. is the, are the first ones just that? Just putting it in that form? Yes. 
putting an augmented matrix form. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, this is where it gets hard. Can we put a lot of those on our test? Yeah. Can we put a lot of this on our yeah. I'll put the ones where you have to solve, like the hard yeah, part. Yeah. Solving. Okay. Here we go. This is gonna be the hard part. Ready? Are you ready for it? No. Here we go. Okay, we're trying to solve this system. So I'm just gonna do this one, uh, and we're gonna do something called reduced row echelon form. Okay, you see that E word? That's called that's that's pronounced echelon, reduced row echelon form. Okay, so we need to write this as an augmented matrix to start with. Here we go. One. I think this is the one from above. One, two, negative two, two, six, positive two. Yeah. Okay. Now, one, two, negative two, two, six, two. That's the. I think that's the same example that we did as the first one. Yeah. So we're trying to solve this thing. Okay. Whoa. Tricks to Here we go. <laughs> yeah. All right. What we're eventually wanting to get to, all of our steps that we do, what we're eventually wanting to get to is something that looks like this. Okay? We want a 1 in this spot, a 0 in this spot, a 0 in this spot, and a 1 in this spot. And then we want numbers here, whatever those numbers are. Okay, let me show you what this looks like. Ready? Okay, we want to get to this point with starting with this matrix, getting to that. I'm going to show you what, like, what we're trying to achieve here, okay? Because what this will end up representing, if we put this back into the X's and Y's and stuff, what does 1 in this position mean? So x equals negative So two. this would just be 1x with 0 y's equals whatever this number is, right? What? Does that? Okay, oh, yeah. let me go through it. Okay, a 1 in this position means just 1x, right? With no y's equals whatever this number is over here. So we're trying to figure out what that number is, right? Okay, what does this bottom row look like? This would be y equals whatever this number is over here. So what we're trying to do is on the left side, we're trying to get it look like 1001. Because what that will do for me is to get the x by itself and the y by itself. Let me go through it again, Emma-car. Okay. No, you're fine. You're fine. Okay, Emma, here we go. Back up. Don't think too hard. Don't think too hard. I'm just showing you what we're trying to get to. What does that have to do with the other numbers? Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. This is what we start with, right? Okay? Or, or like, let's say this is what we start with, Emma, right? Yeah. If we were given this, we're trying to solve for x equals something and y equals something, yeah? Yeah. Like, that's what we're ultimately trying to do, okay? So, well, yeah, we would do, like, like uh, substitution, elimination stuff, whatever, to do that, right? Okay? This matrix right here, if we put it back into this form, this is saying 1x, or just x, with no y's at all equals whatever this number is over here. We're oh, trying to get it to that number. Oh, right and then this one is no x's. This is a y, and there's a number over here. This is ultimately, we're trying to go from this to being to looking something like that. So it's the same thing we were doing yesterday, just a different way. Yeah, just using a matrix instead, right? Well, we might write it as a... Yes, it'll be as a matrix. So it will look exactly like this thing over here, except we will actually know what these numbers are. Okay. So your final answer will look like this. So yes, ma'am. Are x yeah. and y going to be the same number? No. no uh, it might be, but it won't always be. I don't know. When you solve this thing, is x and y always the same number? No. You're just solving right? it normally. You're just solving it. it okay? All right, now, this is going to seem really silly because we know how to solve this. Like, you guys are experts at substitution and elimination, so you're like, why can't we just do it that way, like, forever, right? Yeah. But when you get to, like, three variable and four variable things, which you will have to solve, like a couple of them, it's easier to do this this method, okay? So yes, we're doing a crazy method on something that's really easy that you could probably solve a lot faster doing substitution and elimination, but I'm teaching you this process with an easy one so that you can do it easier with a hard one. Does that make sense? Okay? Because you guys remember yesterday when we were doing three step like X, Y, and Z and we had to add the first one and the second one and add the second one and the third one and it was like a really, really big long process. Yeah. It's not a long process when you do it this way. Okay, good? Yeah, no, it, it wait, might what? seem like a long process. We, it. we haven't solved it yet. I'm just showing you what we're getting to. <laughs> Woo, like, Emma. All right. Okay, like ready? Good? Here we go. Okay. The very first thing that you want to do, number one, should we go steps? Step one? Yeah, we're probably best. Step one. 
I don't know why my cursor keeps getting like it's fatter or something. I don't know what the deal is. Okay, step number one. You want to get one, the number one, in the top left corner. That's the first step. Okay, get a number one in the top left corner. Okay. This guy right here is already a number one. Yeah. Okay. And what if it's not? What if it's not? <laughs> I don't know. What if it's not? Uh, you cannot. So when you're doing this, okay. subtract or add. Like what we will subtract or add. But if I had this equation here and I had like let's say a four, that would be a four in that position, right? How would I make that a one? I would divide everything by four to get that to be a one. Does that make sense? Shh. Divide by divide by four. I want to make that a one, so I would divide by four. Or if this is a two, right? If there's a two in this spot, I would divide everything by two, right? Wait, everything? Everything. No, just the top row by that okay, number, okay, right? Okay, okay. 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 I'm done then. Okay, right? we'll see those later on. So we've got a one in that top left corner, yeah? Okay. okay. Now, we want to get, we, we work like, I don't know, we're, we, we, we work at this one. This one's the one that I want to focus on next. Okay. I'll go to the next one down. Okay. This one I want to become what? Zero. Zero. I want to get it to be zero. Get to zero, right? Okay. All right, this is going to seem really foreign. This is where you have to pay attention. So I'm going to do step number two. Uh, bottom right, or bottom left. Bottom left, I can't do directions. Bottom left equals zero. We want to get it to be zero. Okay? So here's how we write this. This is where you need, this is where you really need to pay attention. Are you paying attention? Ready? Okay. To get that to be zero, I'm going to draw an arrow like this is the next step down, okay? We're going to take everything and multiply it by zero. No. If I was doing elimination, how would I get this to cancel out? Take the top equation times two. negative 2, right? So I would take negative 2 R1, write this down, and then I'll explain. Negative 2 R1 plus R2. Yeah, if Rachel doesn't get it, I'm <laughs> Okay. And I'm going to say equals R2. Okay. Um, Just write that down and I will show you. Write it down and I will show you. Show up. Okay, ready? The top row's not going to change at all, right? We're going to keep the top row the same. Let me parentheses. We have one, two, negative two. Okay, that top row is going to stay the same. We're not doing anything with the top row, okay? But the second row, our new second row, watch this. The new second row is going to be negative two times R1 plus R2, okay? Negative 2 times R1 plus R2. That's going to become my new second row. So if I take negative 2 times this and I add it to this, what do I get? That's R3. Yes. This is row 1. This is row 2, right? Negative 2 times 1 plus 2 is 0. 0. 0 goes in this spot. This is my new 0 right here. Okay? Now I take negative 2 times 2. It's negative 4 plus the 6. Okay. Is going to be 2. What the? What? Do that again. Okay, let's do this again. Ready? Okay, we're just doing this whole thing right here. Negative 2 times row 1. So I take negative 2 times row 1. This is negative 4. And I add 6 to that, which is 2. Yes? Okay. All right, now let's figure out what this number will be right here. No, let's figure out what this number is. Okay. Negative 2 times row 1 four. is 4. Is this will be 6. Yes? Oh, now what do we do? Okay. No, no, no. Are we confused? Yes. 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 You're confused. I mean, it's not terrible. No, it's no, the no, same no. thing as the elimination. Like what you were doing before. We are trying to eliminate this x-coordinate right here. We're trying to eliminate this x-coordinate right here. The yeah. That needs to become 0. So I take negative 2 times this one and add them together, right? That eliminates it. But i got to take negative 2 times this one and add that one. Negative 2 times this one and add that one in order to get the 2 and the 6. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we have achieved step 2. It is done. I told you this is going to be confusing. you got to pay attention. Yeah, step number 3. We want to get a 1 in the bottom right. Okay? Now, it's not already 1. Nope. It is not already one, so we've got to make it one. 
So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the next. I'm going to move the next step up here so I can like do this stuff, right? We're not going to touch row one. Row one's going to stay one, two, negative two, yeah? Okay, mm -hmm. but how do I get this two to become a one? You can't subtract. Divide it by two. So I'm going to say, and instead of dividing by two, what's the same thing as dividing by two? So I'm going to say one half R2 becomes the new R2, right? I'm going to take half of the second row, and it's going to replace the second row, right? I'm just dividing it by two. So first one is zero. Half of two is one. Half of six is three. Guess what we just solved for? Y. We just solved for Y. What is Y? Three. three. Because this says zero X's plus one Y is three, right? This right here said two Y equals six, right? That's what that said. That's pretty epic. Okay. So, so Y equals three. Now we have to get this two to become a zero, okay? So step number four. Step number four. Zero in the top right. Just, just, just wait a second. Just wait a second. Let me get through this and then I'll, and then we'll go back through, okay? I don't want to get zero in this spot, okay? How do I get zero in that spot? What? Zero. No, don't do that yet. No, okay? I want to. R2, whatever. What? R2, whatever. That's not fair. R2. You guys are both kind of saying yeah, the same, I both kind of working through it. Okay? So if I'm trying to get this 2 to cancel out, what cancels with the 2? Negative. Negative 2. So here's what I'm going to do. You got to listen. You girls in the back, you got to listen. I'm going to take negative 2 and I'm going to multiply by what? R1. No. R2 and add it to R1. And that's going to be my new R1. Rachel's catching on. She's got it. Okay. Negative 2 R2 plus R1 makes my new R1. Okay. So we're not touching the R2. We're not touching row 2. It stays 0, 1, and 3 because it's already solved for, right? Okay. So now here's the deal I'm going to take negative 2 times this one. What's negative 2 times 0? 0. And I'm gonna add this to it. One. So it stays one. Do it again. Right? Okay. <laughs> negative two. I'm gonna take really negative two times this one, this one uh -huh. which zero. is zero. Yeah. And I'm gonna yeah. add one to it. One. So that stays one in this spot. I have a question. Okay. Okay. Just wait till I'm done to ask questions. Okay? Now I'm gonna do the second one. Negative two times one. Times one. Two. It's negative two, and I'm gonna add two to it. Two. Zero. So that becomes. Zero, like I wanted it to be, right? Okay. Now I'm going to take negative two times this one. Negative six. Which is negative six and add this to it. Negative eight. Negative eight. Yes? You know what this reminds me of? Like a first grader making a pass off math. So that means x equals negative eight and y equals three. Okay? No, 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 no. Just wait. Just wait. X equals negative 8, Y equals 3. We have achieved what we needed to do. But we have to go in that order. You have to first do this one. Make it a 1. Make this a 0. Make this a 1. Make this a 0. That's the way that you have to go in that order to okay. solve. Okay, no. now, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to say the same thing that I just got done saying to you. This seems stupid because I could do substitution and elimination a lot faster than what I just did. But... There will come a time where you're doing X's, Y's, and Z's at the same time, and doing this process is easier than doing the 1 and 2 equation together, and the 2 and the 3 equation together, and the 3 and the 4 equation together sometimes, right? Hey, hey, hey. Doing all of those is a lot so, easier. What's yeah, the equation of fiction? This right here. You're writing it as an equation. So if it says to write it, express the system, do I write both of them? Yeah, yeah, right. Okay? All right, good. Let's go look at some examples on the homework and then we'll and then we'll finish the other part tomorrow. Okay? You just literally just shot me. Six. 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 Six
So one and two, we know how to do one and two, right? Yeah. Okay. Three and four. Yes. Do you know how to put them back together? Yeah. Right. Okay. How about six? Five. Six. Hold on. No, okay, number six. Great. Number six. Are we just saying X equals seven? Number six. Take a look at number six really quick. They're giving you the answer. How many equations did they have to begin with? Too many. How many equations? Four. They had six of them. Six yeah. equations. Absolutely not. I'm not going to make you solve it, but this is the answer to a six equation. How many variables were in those six equations? Four. Only four. So when you have more equations than you do variables, guess what's going to happen to your bottom rows? They're going to become zeros, okay? So what does the top row represent? X equals seven. No. X equals seven. What's the second row? Y equals one. Y equals one. What's the next one? Z equals negative five. Negative five. What's your, what's your last one? That's all we have to do. Sure, we'll go W equals four. That's it? That's what you're doing. Like, that's all you're doing for those, right? Okay? But that's why your bottom rows become out to be zeros is because everything else is gone. Okay? You should be able to do that entire front page. And if you want to, tr well, no, no, I don't want you to try seven and eight yet. I don't want you to try seven and eight. Okay? No, the zeros, you don't even look at the bottom two rows. Yes. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Now that I have.